that's Glenn Scrivener from Speak Life. We're doing Reading Between the Lines. This is phrase 20, Eve. Uh, Roger Kipling famously wrote, If you can keep your head when all around them are losing theirs. Uh, how do you do that? In a world full of curse and death, how do you cope? Um, more than that, how do you hope in the midst of the death that is around us? In Genesis chapter 3, creation is unraveling all around Adam and Eve under the weight of their own sin and the judgment of God. Everything is tumbling down into the grave. And yet, verse 20, Genesis 3, verse 20, Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. Uh, Eve is very similar in Hebrew to the word to live. And that's what Adam calls her. He calls her life, the mother of all the living. He doesn't call her woe or curse or death or suffering, though all those words would have been ringing in his ears after the Lord's judgments. As soon as the Lord's judgments finish, Adam looks at Eve and he calls her life. He really has changed his tune since verse 12. Do you remember back in verse 12, um, the Lord confronts the couple and Adam just you know, gives this blame. He instantly points the finger and he says, the woman that you put here, God. That's, that's the last thing he said about the woman. And now he looks at the woman and he sees her as this source of universe, universal blessing. He says, you are the mother of all the living. How? How has he changed his tune? Martin Luther, back in the 16th century, said, Adam looked to Eve as the mother of all the living. He saw through to life when everything around him was being subjected to death. That's the trick, isn't it? We, uh, we look around us at everything subjected to death. How can we see through to life? How can we see through to hope? Well, Luther says, well, look, something must have happened to, to Adam between verse 12, when he's all like despair and blame, and verse 20, when he's full of hope. What is it that's between verse 12 and verse 20? It's verse 15. Verse 15, uh, Luther said, this is the first comfort. This is the source of all mercy and the fountainhead of all promises, the offspring of the woman. Let me read Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Here is the promise that comes uh, as the Lord speaks to the serpent. He says there will be an offspring of the woman. A man is not mentioned. A woman alone will produce this miraculous offspring. And the word for offspring is really more literally the word for seed. There will be a seed. And you don't usually think of a woman having a seed. You usually think of a man having a seed. But somehow the woman miraculously is going to produce this seed, this child, this promised child who will crush the head of the house of the wicked, though it cost him everything. He will crush down on the head of the serpent and the serpent will strike his heel. It will be a wrestle. It will be a fight to the death. But through that fight, the offspring of the woman will gain victory. And Martin Luther and many others down through history have looked back at that and said, yeah, that is the first promise of the gospel, the first promise of Christ that he would come and bring life and immortality when everything around us is full of curse and death. That's why Adam changed his tune. That's why before he looked at the woman and he just saw this figure of blame. And then afterwards he looks at the woman and he says, oh, she will be the mother of the living. Martin Luther uh, wrote this uh, about this promise from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He said, All the promises of God lead back to the first promise concerning Christ. The faith of the fathers in the Old Testament era and our faith in the New Testament are one and the same faith in Christ Jesus, although times and conditions may differ. The faith of the fathers was directed at the Christ who was to come, while ours rests in the Christ who has come. Time does not change the object of true faith or the Holy Spirit. There has always been and always will be one mind, one impression, one faith concerning Christ among true believers, whether they live in times past or in now or in times to come. Luther says, there has been this promise that, is, that has been there right back from the very beginning, and it has sustained everybody from Adam onwards. How can we live in a world full of death and yet hope in life? How can we keep our heads when all around us are losing theirs? The same way as every believer has done it since the foundation of the world. We look to Christ, the serpent crusher, he entered into our curse and death to bring us blessing and life. 
And though all around us is subjected to death in Christ, we can see through to life. Thank you.